Green Living at Home is brought to you by Nedbank. Make things happen. Water is a precious resource. It covers 71% of the entire planet and is vital for all forms of life. However, only 2.5% of all the water on the planet is fresh water and 98% of that is locked away in the polar ice caps or buried deep underground. In other words, water is a scarce, precious resource. We need to do everything we can to save every drop. Yeah, so obviously South Africa is a water-scarce country. We're not as lucky as some other parts in the world. So we're below the, the world average in terms of annual rainfall. I think uh, South Africa as a country is around 450 millimeters you know, year annually and, and obviously some parts to the, the west are maybe a little bit dry and, and parts to the east are a little bit uh, wetter. But uh, we, we certainly as a growing country and a growing population and a fixed amount of water are running into water shortages. South Africa is a very dry country and we don't use water as responsibly as we should. Um, at the moment we have water on tap so we use municipal water clean drinking water to flush our toilets, to irrigate our gardens. We use it for all sorts of purposes. Um, so we don't necessarily appreciate it because it is readily available at the moment. It's crazy. You know, if you think some of the rainfall is falling in Lesotho, it's falling in dams, from there it's getting pumped to the Vaal, from the Vaal it's getting pumped to us. The amount of electricity usage that's going into that is, is just crazy. They're cleaning this water, filtering it, pumping it here, going into reservoirs here, cleaning it again, pumping it again, you know, then it's crazy to come to you and then you, you know, you flush it down the drain while you're brushing your teeth. Just, you know, to me it doesn't make sense, or you put it on the garden or water the pavements. <laughs> there are three areas homeowners can look at when it comes to water management, conserving, reusing and harvesting. First, let's look at how you can conserve water around the house. You can put a pool cover over your pool and that reduces the evaporation and it also keeps the temperature more constant. You can sweep pavements rather than hosing it down with a hose pipe. As a homeowner, look at, at how are you using water inside the house. So, you know, very simple things like maybe shower instead of bath. Uh, switch the tap off while you're brushing your teeth. You could, you know, have a look at you know, what is your toilet doing? Is it leaking? Or are there generally leaks on your property? You know, switch everything off and, and, and look at your water meter. Is it ticking over? If it's ticking over, you've got a water leak. Sort that out first because that's a, a huge waste of water. Low flow shower heads, you know, they're a, they're a great thing. You can reduce, you know, your shower usage from a 25 litre per minute to something as low as a 6 or 10 litre per minute. And, you know, you can halve your water usage there. You know, change your toilet from an old single flush to a dual flush, like a three or six litre flush. If you can't change it, you can, you can put uh, containers inside your cisterns that you know, replace water volumes or you, you get things that allow the handle to, to pop up straight away. So as long as you f hold it down, it flushes when you put it up. And even in the garden, you know, have a look at how you're watering. You know, are, are your sprinklers running every single day, the same amount, summer, autumn, winter, which is a, is a waste of water. You know, in winter we need to reduce our water usage. If you've got an irrigation system, maybe look at putting a rain sense on. You know, a very small amount of money and then you don't get these people that are, are watering while it's raining. You know, just such a simple thing can save you, a, you know, a, lot, of, a lot of water use. If you're already doing all these minor water saving measures and find that you're still using too much water, then it's time to look at installing a more complex solution. The first of which involves reusing household water. What people can do is they can start to recycle water. Um, grey water systems are one option that you can use and grey water is generally your washing machine, your shower, your basin, your bath. Um, so it's, you don't use sewage water, obviously, and you don't use fats from the kitchen. Um, but that can actually just be pumped directly on the garden if you don't use harmful chemicals in the water. So that's a very simple system. You can take it through a filtration process and you can put it into an automatic irrigation system if you'd like. Some people use it to go to garden sprayers and there are some other people that would use it to go into a drip irrigation system. If you're considering using grey water back into the house, and the most common example of that would be for toilet flushing, then it's normally a good idea to treat the water a little bit before it goes back in. The other option is to install a rainwater collector. These harvest the rain that falls on your property and stores it for later use. 
Okay, rainwater systems are basically collecting the, the water either from a roof or it could be off of paving, um, but specifically we tend to use it from gutters off of the roof um, because that's its water in its cleanest form. And from there we take it into storage because we get most of our rain at a specific time of year and so we want to collect as much as possible. So from there you can use it directly into the house if you wanted to. You could use it into an irrigation system or for any number of purposes. Obviously the, the bigger the, the surface area that you're capturing from, the more rain you're going to get. We normally work on a, on a rough principle that for every millimeter of rain that falls on the roof and every square meter of roof that you have, you'll generate one liter. So if you have a 150 square meter roof and you have a 20 mil rainfall event, you're already capturing 3,000 liters. So rainwater can generate a large amount of volume very quickly that you would then store and use. By being water conscious and using one or both of these systems, you can dramatically reduce your consumption. This will not only benefit you and your wallet, but also help protect the environment. Next week we'll take a look at indigenous gardens and the difference they can make to your outdoor space. Green Living at Home was brought to you by Nedbank. Make things happen.